All right, so kicking things off today, we are going to be working on the bodice and then I'm gonna skip around a little bit and take you through how to assemble the straps. That way, when we get to that section um, and get ready to attach the lining to the bodice, our straps are ready to go. Um, so for today's sewing, you are gonna need um, your sew along workbook. Hopefully you are following along with that. There's a link in the description box where you can download that for free, help you stay organized and um, stay on track as we get through the week. You're gonna need a marking tool of some kind and a ruler, marking tool, ruler. You're gonna need pins, you're gonna need an iron uh, turned on, preheated, ready to go, filled with water, do all your things. Hopefully your machine is threaded. Um, we're not gonna need a serger today, but not a bad idea to go ahead and thread it if you want to, um, just to be prepared for uh, the next video. So um, first step in this uh, pattern is to sew the darts. So these are the darts on your bodice here. There's four of them. So you need to transfer the marking lines for your side to your pattern pieces. The way that I do this is I line everything up here. I put notches in the bottom corner of the, or the bottom section of the legs, and then I'll put a pin through the point. Then do that on all four of these, and then I'll slowly lift the pin up, mark where the pin is, and then connect the legs to that dot that I've just made. If you need, like if this is your very first time sewing darts, I do have a e-course that takes you through all of the basics of sewing garments. So you'll learn things, up, you'll learn about darts, but you'll also learn about pleats, straps, hems, you'll learn like all, everything. So if you ever need to make a garment, you will have a separate video for that, taking you through step-by-step -step in super, super, super close detail. So if you need more instruction than what I just provided, check that out. It is also linked in the description box. All right, so next steps here at the table are gonna to be to pin up our darts. And again, I come in here, I put a pin through the bottom of the leg and then bring it up to the other leg here, like so, making sure that the notches that I cut in match up like so. And also the pin is going through the line on one side and also on the other side. Then I will come up to the point of the dart. I did lower my darts. I made them not as tall. So if mine look a little more squatty than yours, that is why. Because I had to shorten my bodice so much, um, I needed to shorten the darts too. Okay, and since these are so short, I'll probably just do three pins. So now that one's at the point and I'm gonna put another one in through one leg here, confirm that it's going through the other leg on the back, and then that's it. So I'm gonna pin up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight darts, okay? And then we're gonna to go to our sewing machines and we are gonna sew up all eight of those darts. Okay, so to sew up our darts, we are going to put our garment into the sewing machine, uh, raw edge first. Okay, so this is the raw edge, the bottom edge of my bodice, and this is the point of the dart up here. We're gonna drop our needle, backstitch, and then we are gonna sew, coming up the leg, following along that marking line the whole way. And right now I'm at a regular stitch length, but as I get closer to the point, I'm gonna drop my stitch length by about one millimeter and sew off the edge like so. Lift the presser foot, lift the needle, pull this whole thing out, leave a long tail, all right? So this is what we have at this point. We've got these long tails and I'm just gonna tie these into a little knot and then trim them down. And then that's really it for darts, guys. You're just gonna repeat that, like I said, seven more times. Okay, and then when you're done with all eight of your darts, we are pressing the darts to the center. Um, but you should have two of these, um, and then you should have your back pieces. Um, so we've got the back here, the front here, 
and you should have four backs, two fronts. <laughs> so you are going to take this portion of your back bodice piece is the center back. Okay. That's where the zipper is going to go. This angled section, that's your side seam. So side seam of the back goes with the side seam of the bodice. Make sure that the darts are on the lower edge of your bodice at this point. And they just go on like so, right sides together. And this is gonna be fully lined. So you don't have to worry about finishing any of our raw edges here. We're just gonna sew this at our seam allowance. For most of you, the seam allowance is a five eighths of an inch. But if you watched my episode zero, you know that I am doing half inch seam allowances in some places. So I've got my back bodice and my front bodice lined up at the side seam. And one of the things that I absolutely love that seam work does is they have everything all trued up. So you might've been wondering, why am I clipping off this little random corner as you are cutting your back? That's so that you have this corner here completely, you know, squared off. So you know how everything matches up. So you're just gonna match up your um, triangles, little notches, match up that top edge. And then the bottom of the back bodice has this little triangle thing, which you'll see as we turn this and press the seam open, that'll ensure that that lays really flat as well. But the bottom of your, um, the underside of it should look like this, where at the seam allowance, both of those pieces come together. So everything is really thoughtful and really trued up, um, which just helps confirm as you're sewing that you are doing everything like you're supposed to. All right, so now this has a beautiful top edge finish. And then on the bottom, you can see that there aren't any like weird angles, weird anything hanging off that bottom. Okay, we can set the bodice and the lining aside and we'll start working on our straps. So we've got three different strap pieces here. These two end up coming together something like this, and then this is your back strap. You'll need two of each of these, and for the back strap, the instructions are really easy. You're just folding it in half, sewing it at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and turning it right side out. So you can go ahead and do that. And also go ahead and grab your D ring or your O rings as well. We're going to go ahead and get those situated too. So, um, yeah. Back stitch at both ends. And using some sort of tool, like an awl or something, is really going to help since this is such a small little seam allowance here. And I'll just help you get to the end. All right. Clip your threads. We're now going to tur uh, trim this back to an eighth of an inch. And then using your favorite turner tool, you're going to turn this right side out. Okay, so this is my favorite turning tool. I think, yeah, it's by Dritz. I will link it in the description box for you guys. But especially for these little itty bitty things like the um, the perp the blue ones that you know you stick the little wedge in or the little metal one where you like hook it on the end, they just never seem to work well for me. So this one is my favorite. You put the tube in the strap, then at the end you take a wooden dowel that is provided with the tube of course i lost mine so i'm using a toothpick but it all works the same and you shove this in the top getting it started is always the hardest part and then use the dowel to keep everything inside the tube and then this gets pulled off the edge like so so go ahead and scooch this up until the bottom is exposed and then the other end comes off it just makes such quick work of these like little itty bitty straps. And then the bottom comes out like that. You remove your dowel slash toothpick and you got your little itty bitty strap. Okay, so now you're going to grab your O-ring. We are gonna slip this strap into the O-ring and then match up the raw edges like that. And then you're just gonna stitch across this little area here 
to give yourself this little itty bitty back strap. So you're gonna do that twice, one for each side. And whenever I'm sewing something that's like really small, I always start with my needle in the middle of whatever that is so that I can go ahead and just get it started on the feed dogs. I'll come forward and then back like so. And that way you have it, you don't have to worry about pushing it through or um, missing any of it. Okay, now to the long straps, back to the tape. All right, for these longer straps, I'm gonna show you on the shorter one just so you can see the whole thing. Um, instead of doing the tube and then turning it right side out, we're gonna essentially make um, a bunch of folds that's going to cause this to make a strap. I don't know how to explain it. So we're gonna first press in a little itty bitty press with the long side raw edges matching. So you're gonna have a little crease in the middle of your strap. Then you take the raw edge and bring it up to that crease. Yep, okay, press that. Do the same thing on the other side. So now these two things come in like so, and then you're gonna turn both of these together. So you have the folds on the end and the raw edges are encased inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and edge stitch this all along the folded edge. All right, similar to the back strap, I'm gonna start this a lot uh, further away from the this back raw edge than you would think. And I've got to edge stitch it. That way it's gonna catch my feed dogs just a little bit better and it'll feed it through for me. Like that. Okay, the most important thing is that all your raw edges are caught on the inside. Okay, so do that again for the other strap H. Okay, so now with our strap H, we're gonna move on to the long strap G. You should have two Gs. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with all the folding and pressing, except before we top stitch it, we are gonna grab that little weird looking template piece. We're gonna take this, okay? And we're gonna use this to determine where inside G does H go, okay? So let me fold this up and then I'll show you how to use the template. So take your H and I think it's probably best for the folded edges. This goes like that. Can you guys see where the notches are too, right here and here? And then it's gonna follow the angle of this. So then you tuck this all back in and we're gonna sew all along this long edge here encasing this as we get to this part. All right, you guys, she's finicky, but she's gonna be worth it. So this goes in our machine. Again, I'm gonna start this a little bit further back than you would normally. Now back stitch. And as I get to the little strap thing, just make sure it's laying flat. Stitch over it. And that should encase it inside this other spaghetti strap. Hooray! All right, there we go. Like I said, she's a little bit finicky, but I think it's going to be totally worth it. Look how cute that turned out. And that's it for today. Um, we are going to meet back at the next video um, to talk about our skirt um, and the pockets.